Do you struggle with refreshing your natural curls? Refreshing is probably one of the hardest things to master when it comes to taking care of your curls. And it's definitely something that I don't enjoy doing. I'm gonna walk you through some of the common causes of issues when you're refreshing and how you can fix them. I'm going to cover about seven common problems with refreshing, ranging from frizz, tangles, dealing with flat weighed down curls, and lots more. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love helping you problem solve with your curls and I make videos like this every single week. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. I also wanted to thank Lily Silk for partnering with me again here on my channel. I love their silk products and they're really crucial at protecting our curls at night and I will get into that in the routine. So let's dive into the most common issues that you all submitted to me that you deal with when you refresh and how you can fix them. So I'm currently on day three hair. Typically I can go about four to five days in between my washes, but you want to pay attention to just how your hair is feeling. If you are super greasy or your hair is feeling super dry, just go ahead and wash your hair. I feel like I can still refresh this, although it is gonna take a little bit of work compared to when my hair looks a little bit better than this, usually on like day two. I have not refreshed at all, so that's also important to note. There's only the amount of product in my hair that I applied on wash day, I did not add any yesterday on day two. So in my opinion, the number one cause of frizz on next day hair is from having not enough hold in your styling products or not using a gel. There are so many gels out there, but most of them are just a light to medium hold. If your gel doesn't dry down with a cast or if it can't be reactivated with water, which means when you add water to it and it dries on next day hair, it dries back with a cast, then it's not strong enough hold. So these are the products that I used on wash day. I'm actually testing these out from Maui Moisture. I first started off with this leave-in conditioner. This is the Curl Quench and Coconut Oil Curl Milk, milk for thick and curly hair. So this is a leave-in conditioner, but it's more for very dry hair. And then I use the Maui Moisture Frizz Free Shea Butter Elongating Gel for damaged hair. Now, this is a heavy formula. I don't recommend this if you have very fine hair, unless if you use just a small amount and if you dilute it with water but I thought that this would be good for my hair since my hair leans a little bit more coarse. I do have some coarse areas in my hair. It's very dry and I do like strong holds, so I thought this was gonna be a good option. This didn't give me a very good hold. I still really liked my results and that's great if you're going for volume and softness. I've definitely been playing around with that look a little bit more. You might have seen me incorporating some light hold gels a little bit more, light hold mousses, which is fine, but I just have to know that I'm gonna have to refresh if I'm going to go with light hold products. So. I can either refresh by adding more of this gel, but I know it's not gonna give me any hold. So it's usually just the formula of the gel that's not enough hold, or there's some other factors that can cause you to not get a good gel cast, such as using too much water in your routine that can really dilute your gel. There's lots of other causes. I have a whole video I can link you to all about how to get stronger hold in your routine. But I think I'm actually gonna add in some of my favorite gel from WeDead. This is the Advanced Climate Control Stronger Hold Gel. I know this gives me a cast, Whereas this Maui Moisture one just gave me like a very light cast, but then it just, you know, softened up by the time I scrunched it out. So the next thing that is likely causing frizz on your next day hair is the way that you're sleeping with your curls. If you are sleeping on a regular cotton pillowcase, you're almost guaranteed to have frizz and tangles and smushed curls. I highly recommend sleeping on a silk pillowcase. This is the one that I have here from Lily Silk. Lily Silk makes 100% mulberry silk products. I'm actually wearing one of their shirts here. They have amazing clothes. They also have a silk bonnet that I'm going to show you and also their pillowcases. So this is one of the new Lily soft pillowcases. This is a new material. It's still made out of mulberry silk, but this weave is just so soft, but this definitely has more of that sheen to it, which I personally prefer for my curls because I don't want to have friction on my curls because that always leads to frizz, but there's actually a pocket on the inside of this. So you can fold this up and take it with you when you are traveling. The other Lily silk product that I really love is their bonnet. And this is the one that has a tie right here and it has a little bit of an elastic here. This is a really good size if you have hair that is low density like mine, or even if you have hair that's thinner than mine or shorter than mine, this is gonna be a really good size for you. And I've talked before about how important it is to make sure that your bonnet is the correct size for your hair length and density, because if your bonnet is too large and your hair is falling down in it, it's not staying plopped up, which is just going to stretch out your curls. So this is a smaller design compared to most of the ones that maybe you've tried before. 
and it's also really comfortable because there's no elastic in this band part right here. This is just like a ribbon design and the elastic is only in the back where the tie is. One last thing I wanted to share are their scrunchies. So this is actually a set. It comes with four different sizes, which is a really great option if you're not sure what size is right for your hair length and density. I have the largest one in my hair right now and I have it wrapped around twice, but these are the size differences. This is the next one down and then it goes to this and then this one. So Lily Silk products make for an excellent gift, especially because they're more luxury. They actually come in two different types of packaging. You can either get the gift boxes here, which are really cute. They actually come with a ribbon tied or they have the more sustainable option here. These are recyclable. I actually have a discount code too for Lily Silk that I will include in the description box down below. And I will also link you to their Black Friday sale. You can check out what products that they have on sale at the moment for their Black Friday deals. All that information will be in the description box below. So I'm just gonna spritz my hair down with a little bit of water. You don't want to over wet your hair. You wanna use as little water as possible when you're refreshing because water can be actually damaging to your hair. You don't wanna cause high growth fatigue. Some people like to just use steam just for a light refresh. I didn't get really great results when I tried refreshing with steam. So I just like using my spray bottle here or I'll just wet my hands. I do that a lot of times too and just kind of smooth over the hair. So one of the next common causes of a frizz on next day hair is just dryness or lack of moisture. I usually use both a curl cream and a gel on wash day to ensure I'm moisturizing my curls and then I'm sealing it in with a gel. Sometimes I'll also just use a leave-in conditioner, which is actually what I did for this wash day a couple days ago. I used this cream from Maui Moisture. So if you need to add it back in some moisture, I would go in with more of the leave-in conditioner, but make sure that you dilute it with some water because you don't want to weigh your hair down by adding in a cream on top of your hair that is you know, not completely wet. So I just mixed it with a little bit of water and you can just kind of scrunch some of that in. So the only way to re-moisturize your hair is by adding water and then you can also add a leave-in conditioner or a curl cream. So that's what's going to give you moisture. But that is gonna make your hair very soft. So if you feel like your hair is too soft and it doesn't have enough hold, I would skip adding any leave-in or curl cream on your refresh days. So another big cause of frizz on next day hair is lack of styling on wash day. If you just kind of scrunched in some product and let it go, then your hair might end up frizzy. But if you take some time on wash day to style, like whether if that's with a brush or doing some finger coiling, that can really help prolong your wash day and require less time on refresh days. Whenever I brush style or a finger coil, I get such better results on next day hair because the frizz stays tucked into curl clumps. Whereas if I just kind of scrunch in some product and let it go and just air dry, I end up with so much frizz and it looks very stringy because my hair isn't styled originally on wash day. Another major cause of frizz for me on next day hair is if I air dried on wash day. Every time I air dry, my hair looks so frizzy and I think that's because diffusing sets your gel cast right away. So your hair doesn't even have time to frizz up. If I'm going about my day with wet hair, it's getting exposed to the air, it's getting exposed to probably humidity, it may be very dry heat, anything like that is gonna cause frizz. So I'd rather be able to walk out the door with my hair done, which is why I like to diffuse because then it can't be you know, interrupted during the drying process. So the next issue that we're gonna talk about on refresh days is if you have sweat or oil on your scalp. So what do you do in that case? I recommend just washing your hair if you have a lot of oil or you have a lot of product buildup and your hair just feels really gross, then it's probably time to wash. As long as you didn't just wash yesterday, I don't advise washing every single day. I would say at least every other day. If that's as little as you can do, that's fine, but try and stretch it at least you know every two days if possible. That's probably more ideal. But everyone has a different moisture cycle. Some people just naturally produce a lot more oil and you're gonna have to wash your hair more often. But when it comes to sweat, now of course if you've gotten very sweaty and gross for days and you live in a very hot area, maybe you need to wash, but there's actually nothing wrong with just letting the sweat dry and refreshing your hair. Now, I know this sounds gross for a lot of you. I'm sure some of you are gonna say, you know, you do a very intense workout, which is amazing. Definitely prioritize your workouts and your health over your hair for sure, but you don't always have to wash. Just try and refresh your hair and let it dry and see how it does. I do get sweaty, especially around like my neck area. And sometimes like in the crown area, I do Peloton rides, so I do get very sweaty, but I've just been refreshing my hair. I've also been trying out some refresh sprays. So another solution to that is to use some type of scalp refresher. This is one I've really been enjoying lately. I've only been testing this for about maybe two weeks, so I still need to try it some more, but this is from Not Your Mother's. This is the Scalp Refresh Hair and Scalp Mist, but using a scalp spray can just 
make your hair feel a little bit cleaner. It can just help absorb any sweat and oil. Another option is the Buclem Foaming Dry Shampoo. I've reviewed this before on my channel. I do really enjoy this, especially if you need volume and you want more texture on your roots. This contains cornstarch in it, so that's gonna help give your hair more texture if your hair is feeling way too soft or lacking volume. But this one just gives more of like a clean feeling, so I'm actually gonna spray this on my hair. I'm actually gonna spray it where my hair gets sweaty the most, which is down here at the nape of my neck. I will warn you, the fragrance in this is pretty strong. I think it smells really good, but I do smell it throughout the day. It almost smells like a cologne. So if you don't like strong scents, you're probably not gonna like this, but the witch hazel just feels very like clean feeling. I love it. So I just spritz a little bit of this and rub it in just slightly and then I just carry on with my refresh and when I diffuse I can feel it kind of drying up that area which is good because it's absorbing any sweat or oil. So next up we're going to be talking about tangles. This is probably the most requested topic when it comes to refreshing or the biggest issue that you all are experiencing and it's the biggest one that I experience. I will say that the tangles have gotten a lot better as my hair has gotten healthier. It was way worse when my hair was damaged and there's a lot of things that I do throughout the day and on wash day to ensure that my hair doesn't get tangled. I actually have a whole video about the common causes of tangles. Lots of things you probably haven't even thought of, like your collar on your shirt. Luckily, this shirt from Lily Silk is silk, so it's not going to be causing tangles. But in the wintertime with sweaters and backpacks and purses, there's so many things that can lead to tangles. You want to avoid friction overall, which is why I highly recommend the Lily Silk Bonnet. That prevents so many tangles at night. Most of the tangles happen when you sleep. So if you're sleeping, even just with your hair in a pineapple, you're probably still getting tangles underneath. But a bonnet is the best way to protect your curls overnight and prevent those tangles. So I'm just gonna go in with a tiny bit of that leave-in conditioner and some water. I might even add a little bit of the Weed Edge Gel because this has a lot of slip. Sometimes I'll just use my gel mixed with water. Sometimes I'll use a leave-in. That actually mixed really well, which is good. Um, and I just kind of smooth over the curl clumps. So this is how I fix tangles. I don't completely detangle my hair, really just the ones that are really bothering me. So I just pick up a curl clump and I smooth over it. And as I'm smoothing it, I'm kind of, like I'm putting my fingers in a little bit, but not like fully, like I'm not fully brushing through, but I'm able to just smooth down frizz. I can feel the hairs that are kind of like sticking out. If you have a lot of these hairs that are, you know, sticking out from the curl clump, that's usually what's causing frizz and those are just tangles. So all you have to do to fix that is just smooth them out. So you can either use a brush or you can use your finger. Sometimes I will take my brush. This is my tangle teaser. You need to make sure though that your hair is wet if you're gonna use a brush and that you have some moisturizing products in there because you don't want to cause breakage. I feel like refreshing can be very damaging to your hair if you're like ripping through tangles every day and you're saturating your hair completely. Like that's just not good for your hair to be doing that every day. So I do this as little as possible, but if I really have some bad snags like right here, I will just kind of separate it with my fingers and then I'll use my brush to redefine. I'll try and use the brush to get it out, but I really prefer to use my fingers. And this area of my hair is very coarse, so this is definitely why this area is tingling. I can feel one hair, it was actually a loose hair, which causes a lot of tangles and curly hair because the loose hairs get stuck. But those coarse areas, they just cause so many tangles because they're not smooth and they don't clump together. They're just like, brittle and wiry and they have like kinks in them too that always cause tangles so now it's much smoother so i'm just going to use my brush to smooth over that and now it looks so much better and you can also use your brush to redefine so i don't redefine every curl i don't have time to do that but i'll just do the ones that are really bothering me or i feel like really need to be smooth like my face framing ones and my hair is still not soaked like it's just damp if you look closely the roots are pretty much still dry so I still have some of that slip in my hands. I'm just picking up the hair and smoothing it like this. Underneath, I always get a lot of tingles, so I usually do target those, so I'll just smooth over them. So the next super common issue with refreshing is stringy curls. This is so common when you're refreshing, especially if you're going to be doing any detangling, you are separating your curl clumps that you created on wash day. So stringy curls is just that, when the curls are not clumped and they look stringy. So if you look at it right here, and the lights going through you can see and oftentimes they look frizzy like you'll get wet frizz so the best solution for that is to spritz more water and also use your brush to refresh so this is why i usually will have my brush on hand when i refresh so i just spritz a little bit of water and you just want to take your gel i'm just refreshing with the weed add gel because i need to add a little bit more hold and you can also try the smoothing method that will clump the curls see how much more clump that they look 
and then you can scrunch or you can take your brush this is really the best way to do it and sometimes I just go over just the ends like if the ends are looking stringy I'll just like do this my hair is already detangled from where I just detangled it but I will just clump the ends like this you can also just do individual curls like I mentioned so if you've got one piece that's looking super stringy like this this just needs some water needs a little bit more hold so I just put some of that weed edge gel and I can either finger coil that or so much easier just take my brush and clump it together see how much better that that looks so now it's not frizzy one other tip if you're seeing a lot of frizz like poking through it just take your stronghold gel and just smooth over it so that kind of like tucks it in sometimes I'll even kind of tuck in my fingers like that and I'm just like smoothing that gel over it and tucking it back in so the next issue I wanted to touch on is what do you do when your curls are stretched out? So many of you experience just curls that have fallen limp or they've lost their shape on next day hair. And this is very common if you have waves or loose curls. It just is what it is. You can just rock different hair textures, different days, or you can do some things to enhance your curls or your waves if you do want to kind of spring them back up more. My biggest recommendation is to try using a brush if you do want to try and redefine some ringlets. You can also do some scrunching, so just make sure that your hands are wet when you're going to be touching your hair that's damp like this and just do some scrunching with some product. Another one of the biggest causes is from wearing your hair up. That always stretches out my curls. So that's why I recommend the Lily Silk Scrunchies because those don't stretch it out too much if you can wear your hair up looser. Now, if you have to wear it up very tight for a workout, that's probably just gonna stretch out your curls. It is what it is. You can just refresh your roots if you need to spring them back up. So I definitely recommend just scrunching and stuff to try and redefine those. You can also try scrunching with your hair towel to really redefine them. And sleeping with your hair up in a pineapple is also going to stretch them out because you're stretching out the curls underneath. Now I know some people like to try like the two pony method where they have one here and then the pineapple on top. That might help the underside not get stretched out as much, but that's why I recommend just wearing a bonnet because I know that it's not gonna stretch out my curls because it's keeping those curls plopped against my head instead of pulling on them. Also, another one of the biggest ways to prevent stringy curls is to diffuse. I always diffuse on a refresh day and I will show you how I do that. It usually only takes a few minutes, but anytime that I just air dry after a refresh, I always have very stringy curls because the curls are being set in that just more elongated position and diffusing really helps to shrink everything up. So another common issue is the feeling of your hair. So maybe your hair feels very producty or sticky on next day hair. So the number one cause of this is using products that are just too heavy for your hair on wash day. Usually gels like this one that are clear and very thick, these usually cause that feeling on my hair. Now this one didn't, my hair actually felt very soft, I was surprised, but some gels like this give me that sticky producty feeling and they're just way too heavy for my hair or maybe they have too many like film formers in them like polyquats and sometimes that can build up on people's hair although it's great for humidity, but that's usually a result of using the wrong kind of products or using too much product. Whenever I use too much of those types of gels, I always get that feeling. Or just go with a gel that's more liquidy, more watery. I love the consistency of this gel because look how just like slippery it is. It just has so much slip and it just makes your hair feel very soft and slippery. You don't get that like gunked up feeling. Another common cause of the sticky feeling is layering on too much product on your refresh days. I try to add as little product as possible. That's why I try and skip refreshing on day two if possible. I will try and just do a water only refresh. And if you're using a stronghold gel that can be reactivated with water, you shouldn't have to add more gel. Now, eventually your products are going to kind of evaporate and dissolve away and you might have to add more by day like three or four. But on day two, you shouldn't have to be adding more gel. If you are, then you've probably not used the right gel or it just doesn't have enough hold. Another thing I like to do is dilute my gel when I am applying more gel. So you'll usually see me wet my hands under the faucet and then add some gel. And then I get this like emulsified, slippery, watery texture that's great because then you're not putting too much product on and you're still refreshing with some more product. It's just not too much. So if you still have that sticky feeling and you need to fix it, I would try taking your hair towel and you can actually scrunch some of that out. So you'll need to get your hair probably a little bit more wet than usual to actually absorb some of this, but you'll just wanna kind of spray your hair with some water and then take your hair towel and then just scrunch. So this is going to soak up the excess product and also help dry your hair. So I would do this at the end of your routine. 
So this can absorb product because the towel is very absorbent. Now this may cause frizz, especially if your hair is not wet enough, but it's also gonna define your curls, but it's soaking up that excess product. So this is really the only fix that I know of to get rid of that sticky feeling or at least reduce it. Other than that, you just need to rewash your hair or do a hairstyle. That feeling is actually great for, you know, updos because it gives you some grit. So I would just throw my hair up in a bun until I'm ready to wash it again because it's really hard to go back from that feeling, but maybe try this and see if it helps. So the next common issue is having very flat roots or just lack of volume. You can see I don't have a lot of volume right now. I just did a lot of like smoothing, which definitely reduces the volume, which I'm fine with because I don't really want a ton of frizz but you can try out some of those root refreshing sprays or like this foaming dry shampoo that helps give root volume, but you really need to wet your roots down if you want to reshape them with your diffuser. Now, like I mentioned, if you air dry, you're not gonna get any root volume, but diffusing you can, but your hair has to be wet in order to reshape it. So sometimes I'll just spritz my roots down with some water, not a lot, because I'm not trying to soak my hair here. I'll just make sure that they are wet. Usually I'll do this before I start refreshing, by the way, not after, but we're a little out of order here. And then I'll use my diffuser prongs to lift the roots. That's gonna give so much more volume. This is also very common if you have thin hair, if you have very fine hair, you're going to have reduced volume on next day hair. And it can also be caused by using too much product on wash day, just like I mentioned with that sticky feeling. You probably use products that are too heavy or you just use too much and that caused your hair to be flat by day two. Or you're just someone that produces oil, which is naturally going to weigh down your hair. And by that point, it's just time to rewash, especially if it's been a couple of days. So these root clips have been game changing for me on refresh days. I've been using these so much on wash day, but I love them on refresh days. So you just place these around your part and I even use this to pull my crown together. So if you've got a cowlick, these are definitely gonna help for that because it's forcing the hair closer together so that way when you diffuse, it's going to cover it a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and diffuse. I like to use my diffuser prongs to really get in there. Usually I'll diffuse without these first and then apply them towards the end of my routine. I just wanted to show you if you are someone that is gonna air dry, you can go ahead and put them in, but let me show you when I diffuse. So sometimes I will stop my diffusing and if I get a really frizzy area like this, then I probably forgot to add a product. And since I had that light hole gel in my hair, I need to make sure like it's pretty covered with the stronger hold. So I'm just gonna add some water and some of the strong hold gel and smooth that down and then just finish off diffusing. And diffusing should only take you less than five minutes when your hair is just damp from refreshing. You shouldn't have to diffuse forever. If you did, then you definitely use too much water. I'm gonna go ahead and add the clips in. My hair is dry now and it's still warm. And I'm gonna just let these clips set in for a little while and then once I'm done with that, I'll scrunch out the gel cast. I don't scrunch out all of it, just a little bit. So now I'm just removing the clips from my hair. My hair has had a while to just set and I usually like to fluff and scrunch out any of the crunch that I don't want, but I'm probably gonna leave some of it just so it will last more throughout the day. But fluffing the roots is key to getting more volume. I usually do this whether if I refresh or not. And I have so much more volume compared to when it was kind of just like flat stuck to my head. I would say diffusing probably makes the biggest difference. That and having a stronghold gel. So if you take away anything from this video, it's make sure you're diffusing when you're refreshing, protecting your hair at night, and using a stronghold gel on wash day. Those are probably the keys to an easier refresh. So my hair is not perfect by any means. I do definitely still have frizz, but it's okay. I mean, if I look closely, there's definitely some root frizz going on. It's a little bit stringier, not as clumped as it is on wash day. And of course, volume usually is reduced, but it's day three. I don't expect it to be perfect. So I created this chart that I think sums up perfectly what is involved in a successful refresh day or in a wash day that actually lasts longer. So it's not refreshing that you can't get down. It's probably what you're doing on wash day and then in between when you actually go to refresh. So how do you know when you actually need to refresh? Well, I like to avoid refreshing as much as possible, not just because I don't feel like doing it, but it's also not really healthy for our hair to be soaking it with water. That can just lead to things like high growth fatigue, which if you're not familiar with that, I have a whole video on it, but it's basically damage that's done to our hair structure 
by repeated wetting and drying of the hair. So we don't need to be wetting our hair down every single day. There are ways to refresh without using too much water. However, if your hair has gotten really greasy, it's dirty, and it's feeling very dry, it's time to just wash your hair. You don't have to stretch your hair for days and days in between your washes like everyone likes to preach. And I will say that refreshing gets so much easier as your hair gets healthier. So if you're currently transitioning and just getting started with your curls and you're going from very damaged hair, whether that's from heat or bleach or color, and you're trying to get your curls healthy, refreshing is going to be tough. The higher porosity that your hair is, which refers to how well your hair can absorb and retain moisture, the drier your hair is going to get and the less likely that your curls are gonna look great on next day hair. It's just how it is. When I was transitioning, it was so hard to refresh. My curls became dry and frizzy and they just tangled up so easily. And that was one of the biggest things that I noticed once my hair got healthy is how much easier my refreshes were and how much more consistent my wash day results were. So if you haven't yet already checked out Lily Silk, I will have the links down below along with my discount code. Make sure you check out their Black Friday sale so you can see what kind of deals they have going on. And if you decide to try out some of their stuff, definitely DM me on Instagram and let me know what you get. So if you're still needing more help with your refreshing, I recommend checking out the video that I have linked right here on the screen. It's all about the common mistakes that you might be making in your routine that are leading to frizzy hair on next day hair and while you're refreshing. So I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.